The next question is from Dr. Samir, and it's about um, Lacerda syndrome. The question is, what's the difference with pronator syndrome and how do you manage long, cr chronic long-term um, Lacerda uh, syndrome? Um, so first, uh, pronator syndrome, um, Lacerda syndrome are both syndromes of pronation. They're both an, um, a form of entrapment of the median nerve um, in the proximal forearm. In this area uh, that goes from the Lacerda's area all the way to the, uh, to the tunnel between the two heads of the pronator teres and even more distally all the way to the, the arch of the uh, flexor superficialis of the, of, of the middle finger. Um, so it's this whole area here on the medial side of the forearm is an area where the nerve can be entrapped. In 95% of the cases, if not more, the main structure responsible for the entrapment is the Lacerda's fibrosis. And it's all that needs to be released uh, to treat the syndrome. And when you do that under Wallant, you can, you can test for the return of power in the thumb index and flexor carpi radialis, which confirms to you and the patient that you've released the nerve. Now, from that point, I, I will insert my little finger, my small finger, uh, in, inside the wound, alongside the path of the median nerve to make sure there's no residual entrapment more distally. But again, in well over 95% of the cases, uh, this is where the entrapment is, until certus fibrosis and that's all you need to release. If in the rare case of um, where you would find a more distal entrapment, then you can perform a more distal incision here, also under Wallant right away immediately uh, to make sure the nerve is released. But um, after hundreds of cases, I've yet to, do, to have to do that. So I think it's been, it's been a big paradigm, sh paradigm shift um, because we used to treat pronator syndrome with an incision, very long incision in this area, but this has been completely transformed um, into a minim minimally invasive uh, surgery with a two centimeter incision in the, in, the, in the elbow crease and with spectacular results. Now, the question was about long term. I don't think there's um, really any difference because Conversely to what happens in a carpal tunnel syndrome, for example, um, in carpal tunnel syndrome, if you, have, if you have a very old carpal tunnel syndrome that's been ongoing for years, um, it is usually due to the fact that there's too much pressure inside the carpal tunnel, which causes a blood supply compromise to the nerve, and then that, cause, and that results in nerve damage. Um, it starts with um, you know, edema, fibrosis, and, and, and damage to the... Um, the Schwann, the Schwann cells, therefore the sheath, and it goes all the way down to basically uh, death of the axon. And this requires significant pressure over the nerve, which is the case in carpal tunnel syndrome, but it's not in Lacerda syndrome, where the pressure is much less. And I think the pressure under the Lacerda is just enough to cause um, a disruption or alteration of the axoplasmic transport, which results in um, an abnormally functioning nerve, uh, but not in damage to the nerve. So even in long-term Lacerda's syndromes, uh, I, I, I have not found permanent damage. Um, and I've had great results releasing um, recent cases of Lacerda's, and by recent, I mean several months, for example, or cases that uh, were probably much older. I don't think um, waiting is that dangerous, um, which is quite different from uh, other types of nerve entrapments. I think it's a matter of, of, of how much pressure you have on the median nerve and, and the potential damage that can result from that.